Since I announced the Topaz Lab teaser, many of you have been eagerly waiting for this. Here it is, M1 Pro, M1 Max with Topaz Lab image enhancement software, and let's see how they do. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. As usual, this session will be information rich. I'll leave timestamp in the description below and feel free to pause the video so you can see the result longer. Let's look at our test and reference system. I have amassed a large amount of the M1 Pro and M1 Max computer in the 14 and 16 inch configuration. I don't have the entire SoC lineup, but I have a good representation for what we're going to see. And this test are definitely gonna be extremely good and just showing you how these machine would perform and what configuration you should get. For the memory, I have 16, 32 in both the Pro and Max and also 64 gigabytes. And some of you have asked me the question, how can you afford all these machines? Do you own all of them? The answer is no. There are some machines that are mine and the other ones I have borrowed some of my friends and they're kind enough to allow me to use their machine for a few hours at a time. So thank you so much and you know who you are. In addition to this, I'll also be sharing the result from Intel machine, one of them being a Mac Pro, the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro and also two M1, that being the Mac mini M1 and also the MacBook Air M1 so that we can see the way how these computers are performing and how the performance spreads are. I've decided to break down this video into three separate parts. This will be part one. And for this one, I'll be looking at Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and also Giga AI. And with this, we're going to be doing a JPEG workflow. I'm gonna talk about workflow in just a moment. In part two, I will cover Denoise AI and Sharpen AI using a raw and also DNG workflow directly from the camera, putting into these program right away. And for the third part, this will be the video enhanced AI. So if you're looking for the video enhanced result, you're gonna to have to wait just a touch longer, but it won't be too bad at all. So workflow, let's talk about this briefly. There are multiple ways you can approach the workflow with Topaz software. From what I see, there are two predominant ways to go about it. One way is to edit your image in Lightroom and Capture One, take it out into Photoshop, do everything that you need to do, export it as a JPEG, and then what you would do is take that JPEG and put it into these program and have it go through the analysis and have it enhance the image for you. And this will be the end game. This is what we're going to cover in this part. The other way to do it would be to take the raw directly from the camera, either as a raw file from the camera file or convert in DNG and then have Topaz software analyze it, do everything it needs to the raw file and then resave it out as a DNG file again. So two different approach. For that part, I'll cover in the second video. Let's have a look at our test images. Starting out with the Aurora, this is the Nikon EA10 image that is 36 megapixel and is a JPEG file, 50.4 megabyte. The next file is a Panorama 192 megapixel Nikon DA10 file stitched together into that crazy amount of dimension. And for this one, the JPEG file size is 128.1 megabytes. Before we look at the result, there's a few things I want to mention, starting out with optimization. I think that Topaz Lab software, like many other image editing software, are not fully optimized for the M1 Pro and M1 Max processor just yet. In fact, analyzing the way how Topaz software runs, I would probably go as far as saying that it's not even optimized for the M1 or the Intel native processes of the past for that matter, just because it's not really tapping into the full performance of the machine. And there is a difference between having the process run native on the machine so it doesn't have to go through the Rosetta 2 translation layer. However, there's a difference between optimization and having something run native on the system. And that's something that we always have to remember. The other thing is AI. Based on my testing so far, using these control group images that you've seen earlier, if I put these same images on any machine, the results are exactly the same on the automatic setting which is a good thing. You get really consistent result and it does go in and analyze the individual image. However, I'm not really 100% sure where the artificial intelligence comes in. Is it in the algorithm that was created from Topaz Lab itself? Because when I think of AI, I think of the subset of it, which is machine learning. And these does have 16 neural engine cores that you apply a model to it. You put the pictures in there and have the model start to do all these adjustments and you would get a result that's slightly different every time. That means the automatic recommendation would be slightly different every time. But 
we're not really seeing that. So I'm not saying that Topaz is not being honest or anything. I'm just saying that I'm not really seeing the AI being used in, in the machine learning sense, but it could be in their algorithm or the algorithm itself could be developed using AI. So now let's have a look at Denoise AI and see the way how this program is utilizing the system resources. If we take a look at this Denoise AI, and this is by the way, captured from a 16 inch M1 Pro processor with 32 gigabytes of memory. We can see that when I run this software, we get a lot of the high efficiency core being used and just only two out of the four high performance core that are really being utilized. The rest, they are being used, but not quite as much. I'd like to see more use of this so that we get even faster speed from the program. We get CPU usage that peaks at around 75%. However, most of the time it ends up being between 30 to 50%. It doesn't really go that much higher than that. And this just goes to tell us that there is more room for optimization to really dial this up and use the peak performance of the machine. As far as GPU memory go, I include that in there. However, this reports it in percent. And because this has a unified memory, it doesn't really mean too much. If we take a look at the memory usage for Denoise AI, when I put in those two pictures, we get a usage of around close to 15 gigabytes. The memory pressure is still pretty good on the system. It's really a low memory pressure requirement right now, which is a good thing. But here's the thing for memory pressure. If you are running into a situation where you're in the fifties or the 75, that means you probably need more memory on your system. As far as actual RAM uses go, this is pretty much a reflection of what you see in the chart on the left. It is telling us that we are using close to 15 gigabyte on a 32 gigabyte machine, which is slightly under that 50% mark, which is a good thing. And you will also see that slight purple at the very top there too. That purple is telling us that some of the memory has already been compressed. And this is going to be a lot of the themes that you're going to see using these Topaz software is that it doesn't really go in to utilize the memory fully before it even start compressing it. So let's have a look at the result. Denoise AI on the single 36 megapixel. All of these are within margin of error of each other. They're only a second or two even longer. And the longest one was the base 14 inch MacBook Pro because it has less CPU, less GPU core in the system. And that's what's really contributing to it taking longer. So Denoise AI is one of those programs that really go in and utilize a little bit more of the resources on the CPU and the GPU of the system. But that's not going to be the same throughout all these tests as you're about to find out. Let's throw in the Intel and the M1 machine into the Macs and we start to see that curve that the M1 Pro and M1 Max sit at the very top with the M1s following not too far behind and the two Intel ones at the very end there that is really trailing behind. And the sad part is that the Mac Pro that's supposed to be a really powerful machine that costs anywhere between two to 10 times more than the system that I'm testing here. It's not doing too well on that. So we now start to see the real performance. Let's have a look at the panorama file. We start to see a little bit more of a spread. And with this, we can really deduce a couple of things. Number one, having the M1 Max with 64 gigabyte memory, does that help with speed? Yes. So we're seeing a couple of things that as we increase in RAM, you can see from 16 at the bottom up to 32 in the middle and 64 at the very top, we're getting shorter time because we have more RAM. That means less compression in the system, no swap. That is definitely speeding things up. But when you compare the 32 together, I mean, I would say that these are within margin of error with the 14 inch base one performing a little bit slower because there is less CPU and less GPU core in the system. However, what's really interesting to me is these two results. So if you ever wonder if 32 gigabytes on the Pro and the Max will make a difference, um, they're pretty much exactly the same. No differences whatsoever in that 200 extra gigabyte per second memory speed. And the slowest one out of the bunch in this test is the 16 inch based MacBook Pro. And this one only has 16 gigabytes of memory. So it took a little bit longer between the top and also the bottom RAM. So 16 to 64, you're looking at around $800 difference for this. And you're really seeing about a 25% increase. But if you're only going to put in so many pictures, I don't think it was worth it for that 15 seconds for one file. So that's just really up to you. But honestly, I don't think it's going to make too big of a deal at all. Let's throw in the M1 and the Intel machine. And we got a little nudge here. So the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro is no longer the last two with the Mac Pro. It bumped up a little bit, but 
performance is really on par with the MacBook Air and still the Mac Mini M1 that costs half as much still beats it out very clearly. Obviously, M1 Pros and M1 Max are still at the very top. So that is Denoise AI result for us. And if we take a look at the result and the way how the program is utilizing it, as I mentioned, it's not really peaking any of these cores. It's not really peaking the GPU. So I will love to see more and get more speed out of here, especially if I'm throwing in a lot of files. Let's now look at Sharpen AI. So with Sharpen AI, we see a slight difference in the way how the program is utilizing the system resource. And what we have to do when we look at these shards is we have to look at towards the end here because I'm running these in successions and I didn't restart or break in between. So what we're seeing on these two charts is that Sharpen AI is not really using so much of the high efficiency core, which is a good thing and is peaking a lot more in these high performance core, which is exactly what I want to see. And that's good, but it's only really utilizing four out of the eight. So what happens with all these empty CPU cores that are not being utilized? I find that very interesting. The GPU usage did bump up into the 60% range, and that is something good to see because it is utilizing the system resources more. As far as GPU memory go, we're not going to worry about that too much. And let's have a look at the RAM utilization in the system. Sharpen AI can use up to as much as 16 gigabytes when we're working with these two files. Memory pressure did went up a little bit, although not that much at all. You're still under that 25% threshold. You're going to be fine. But we are now seeing two peaks. So the first peak was the Denoise AI. And we have to look at the second peak right now. And this second peak is the Sharpen AI. And we see the results pretty much repeating of each other that we get the compressed memory at the very top. And we get the utilization that is a little bit under half of the RAM that's available in the system. Let's take a look at the result. A single 36 megapixel file that's exported to JPEG. They're within about a second of each other. There is not too much of a time difference. Interestingly enough, the base M1 Pro with 32 gigabytes of memory perform within the top group instead of like the bottom group. And on the bottom group, what we see in these two is that this is the one with 16 gigabytes of memory. So not too big of a difference there. In fact, when you start to bump this up between 32 and 64 gigabytes of memory, we're not really seeing that big of a performance improvement. What is this really telling us? Well, let's wait until we see the result from Giga AI before we draw any decisive conclusions about the RAM usage. But now let's have a look at this with the Intel and the M1 machines. So these computers are still at the very top, coming in really closely behind are the M1 and on the Intel processor, it's pretty much the two dead last. Let's have a look at the panorama file. We start to see a slight delineation in timing between all of these, but they're still only a few seconds apart. And with the fastest one performing around 10 seconds faster. So if you can justify spending $800 more, going from 16 to 64 gigabytes to get that 10 seconds extra performance, and this is not even representative of around 25%. This is around like 7, 8% performance improvement when you add more RAM to here. I don't think it's really worth it. But we're seeing the same thing happening right now that between 32 and 64, there's not that big of a difference. So this is telling us something. With this, let's throw in the M1 and also the Intel. Well, the 16 inch MacBook Pro definitely did nudge up a little bit, although it's only six seconds faster than the MacBook Air that is less powerful with less RAM and does not have a fan. So go figure. Um, that's really quite a substantial difference because that is four times more memory and it's only six seconds faster. And with this one, the sad part about it is the Mac Pro that's taking around six minutes to do this test. All the while, all the M1 Pros and M1 Macs are sitting at the very top. So yeah, these machines are definitely gonna do wonders, especially if you're doing a photography workflow. Let's now look at Giga AI, which is the key thing that I want to point us out towards in this test. So Giga AI has a mixed use of the CPU on the system, we can see that it's not utilizing so much of these two high efficiency, which is something that we want to see that is really throwing in a lot of these tasks into the high performance. And that's what we really want is for it to go and target these high performance. So all these peaks that you're really seeing on all these other cores are a great thing. As far as GPU usage, it's not really using that much GPU at all. And this one is only using 25%. So this is really more of a CPU based task. 
and memory, we're gonna skip that for now. We'll look at the actual memory use. This could be as high as 26 gigabyte, especially when we're trying to make the files like that much larger. As far as memory pressure go on a 32 gigabyte machine, we're starting to get into that 50% range, but we're still mostly in the 40%. That means you're still going to be okay. You're only peaking every now and then. It's not a big deal. Actual RAM usage, we're seeing a lot of things happening now. We're seeing a lot of purple. And that purple indicates that there is a lot of compression happening with the memory. So as soon as it's done processing that part of the image in the RAM, it just compresses it right away. It's a pretty efficient way of using it, although we're going to see something very different. And I'll point this out to you right now. We're going to see a comparison between all this later is that this is really hovering at around 75% regardless of whatever memory configuration you have. But let's see the result first. Giga AI. 36 megapixel file, trying to expand this by four times. So this is the max that it can do. And from what we're seeing between all these machines that has 32 gigabytes of memory and up, especially comparing the top one to the bottom one, we're looking at maybe nine seconds more. And this one, I don't think it's so much so the nine seconds because it has less memory. I think it's just the nine seconds because it has less CPU core on the system. I think that's pretty much it. The spread between all the other ones are just only a few seconds apart, so there's no big deal. But we're starting to see a trend, and I think that this is the best chart to really just tell you the machine configuration that you need, that it doesn't really matter much what SOCI you choose. What's more important for Topaz software is the amount of RAM that you set into the system that you choose for that. But again, there is a quick point of diminishing return between 64 and 32 that we're not getting that big of a performance increase. Let's have a look at this with the M1 and also the Intel machine. And for once, we now have the Mac Pro coming in at the second. Still doesn't beat out the top 16 inch M1 Max machine, which is quite interesting. It's only two seconds longer. But what's really happening with Giga AI is that it's utilizing the CPU, but it's not really pushing the CPU. So it doesn't really matter how much the CPU is running or how fast it's running. So much so it just wants the memory in order to for it to expand, store everything there and then put it together into a file. And this is the reason why the Mac Pro does really well. This is also another reason why the 16 inch MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of memory does really well. Although the base M1 Pro with 16 gigabytes of memory already beat this out by around three seconds. So that just really goes to tell you. And by the way, that base 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro processor, that's around half the price of the 2019 MacBook Pro that I have. So a lot of very interesting things happening. And the Mac Mini M1, MacBook Air M1 is coming in dead last, although it is only two seconds apart. I mean, this is really not bad at all, and it really shows you a very interesting result. Let's see how this looks with the panorama files. So between the two M1 Max computer, 64 and 32 gigabytes of memory, pretty much dead, exactly the same. Comparing these two, the M1 Max and the M1 Pro between the 24 GPU and the 16 GPU with the same 32 gigabytes of memory, they're only like a few seconds from each other, like four seconds or three seconds longer. This is also telling us that the memory speed difference between the Pro and Max doesn't really make a difference in real world whatsoever. So we should not really care about that. And if you take a look at all these spread, the rest coming down, I mean, there's only a few seconds apart. The longest machine in this test is the 16 gigabyte base 16 inch model because it has less memory. That's pretty much what it is. So this is a task that takes a lot of memory, but the memory speed makes absolutely no difference in these tasks whatsoever. The amount of memory kind of does, but we see again, the point of diminishing return with 32 and 64. And when we add in the Intel and M1 into the mix, well, for once, my Mac Pro and the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro, it's not dead last. It's stuck right in the middle between the two of them. The MacBook Air taking the longest and the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro processor with 16 gigabytes of memory coming just slightly behind the Mac Mini, which is very interesting. So I've verified the result a few times when things look a little bit iffy, but um, again, they're really close to each other. If you're going to configure the base M1 Pro, you might as well just get the M1 from the previous generation. So here's my thing. If you're gonna, just going to go with like this base 10 core 16 GPU thing, I would not bother. I would probably just even go for like the 14 inch base because 
it's not really that big of a difference. And the 14 inch base in this one technically beats out with 32 gigabytes of memory, definitely beats out the base 16 inch MacBook Pro with the top M1 Pro processor. So a lot of very interesting things to think about. Let's have a look at Giga AI memory usage. And this is taken from three separate machines, a 64 gigabyte memory machine, 32 and 16. And we can see that it is using close to 30 or 26, 27 gigabytes or so with the 16 gigabyte model taking up to 35 gigabytes of memory, which it doesn't have that much. So what is it really doing? Well, it's swapping to the SSD. So there's a lot of swap happening on those systems. If we take a look at the actual RAM usage on the 64 gigabyte model, it's barely using half. There is zero swap on the system, which is the reason why I'm not showing you any of the swap chart whatsoever. There's no point. And the one great thing about having 64 gigabytes of memory is that there are no memory compression because you can just go in and utilize the memory fully to its heart content. And yes, it's still under that 50% mark. If we look at the 32 gigabyte model, you will notice that this peaks at around 75%, even with the compressed memory. And most of the time, the peak memory usage itself, that's the one in red, is hovering at around 50%. Well, that's true because the moment that happens and it starts to go higher than 75, it starts to go through the swap right away. So on the 32 gigabyte model running these exact same images, you're putting in 15.4 gigabytes of swap. That's quite a substantial amount of memory that you have to swap to the system. Amazingly enough, with all the compression and the swap happening, the time difference between the 64 and the 32 gigabyte model, it's pretty much negligible. So I would just say margin of error for the most part when you use Giga AI. What's interesting though, is when you look at the 16 gigabyte model, we now have a large amount of compression. We now have memories that are peaking in somewhat of the 50% range, but not too well. And the other thing is that we have a large amount of swap, 27 gigabytes of memory being swapped in the system. And remember when I told you earlier that there is a magic number, 75% of RAM that's being used in the system? Well, this 16 and 32 gigabyte, this chart, is showing exactly that, that it's not using any more than that. I would like to see it really just burst and really push higher and allow the actual memory, the one in red, to go even higher before you start the compression. I think that's going to change the way how the program is responding and increase the processing speed, but that's my opinion. And I'm not a software engineer. I just have some computer engineering background, so I understand this enough, but again, I'm not the coder. All right, let's have a look at the 32 gigabyte computer with Giga AI, Sharpen AI, and Denoise AI actual RAM usage compare. Giga AI used the most amount of RAM, Sharpen AI used somewhat moderate, very similar to Denoise AI in the amount of RAM use on the system. So what are my thoughts and recommendations after seeing all of this? Well, I already shared that with you, but just to wrap this up, it doesn't really matter much which SOCI, which processor you choose to run your Topaz Lab software because they're all going to be the same. The amount of RAM in the system that you choose will definitely make a difference, but you already saw in my test that spending 400 extra dollars to go from 32 to 64 gigabyte does not make it run faster. It just minimizes the swap and brings it down to zero. But if you don't really care about that, I think 32 gigabytes of memory is definitely the sweet spot because it shows a performance improvement over the 16 gigabyte model. And if you want to ask me for the best configuration to choose for photo, get the base 14 inch MacBook Pro with the base processor upgraded 32 gigabytes of memory. I can't tell you enough how powerful this machine is compared to the rest. And you're saving so much money. I mean, if you don't upgrade to the max processor, you're saving $700 and you're just upgrading a RAM and spending $400 extra. I mean, this is a lot of saving on this machine that I think is totally worth it. If you want to go with the 16 inch model, I would just get the base M1 Pro or the max M1 Pro. It would be this processor in the 16 inch one. So you only have that one option. Upgrade to 32 gigabytes of memory and you're set ready to go because let me put it this way. If you're buying any of these M1 Pro, M1 Max machine, and you're getting only 16 gigabytes of memory, you're probably better off just getting the M1 computer. As you already saw, the result with 16 gigabytes, it's not that big of a difference at all with these Topaz software. So for part two, I'll be doing a test with raw files using Denoise AI and Giga AI. 
which files from Nikon NEF in its native form and also DNG Panorama from Lightroom and we'll see how these two programs perform and if we see any more differences. If you want to see part three, this is the video on Hands AI. It'll be a separate video just talking about that and analyzing in a very similar way that I have done here. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.